Hi everyone, welcome back to Echoes of Wisdom 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John. Last we left off, we uh, saved Hyrule. <laughs> We saved the king, we helped out Minister Left and Right, and you're also going to notice that uh, General Right has monster intel, and one of the two things that he's going to be talking about is the Eastern Temple that we already did because it was a lot of fun. The other thing is going to be another event that we have to do that we're probably going to get to today. We have been skipping a lot of the side quests because you have to come back after the events at Hyrule Castle to the areas anyways. So in today's episode, we're not going to uncover any new ground. We're just going to be finishing quests in the areas we've already been to, starting with the Southern Forest. But before that, I'm pretty sure we can upgrade our sword again. That's right, the overworld theme is different now that we're revealed Zelda. Oh, and since we're revealed Zelda, I'm also going to go ahead and get my uh, amiibo scans of the blue attire the red tunic, and the black cat clothes. And uh, I'm gonna wear this red tunic because I did not wear it in my first playthrough and I want to. If we check out Blueberry's machine, she, he's gonna be like, hey, I can make it even more better now. And you're gonna get your option for your energy and your sword and your bow. And if you've been following along, you do have 20 might crystals. I'm gonna upgrade my sword. Now we have sword of might level three. Nice. Is that max level? Yep, that's max level, nice. So let's make our way to the rift that appeared in the Southern Forest. This is one of the small rifts that you're going to be having here in the second half of the game. And for these small rifts, I'm going to just very briefly go over the places that we need to be visiting in here just because you're familiar with platforming. You know how to get around. If there's anything of interest, I'll be sure to point it out, but typically there's not. And there's only four of them that we need to rescue here. The stilled lower Southern Forest. I'm going to start by heading to the right. There's some monsters to deal with. Oh, new sword is powerful. And on top of here is gonna be our orb. That's number one. Back to the starting area, I'm gonna head north. On top of the area with the P hat right here on the map is where we're gonna be finding our second orb. And just to the right of where that last orb was, we're gonna be finding one here on this right island. And lastly, we need to make our way all the way to the left where we're gonna be seeing a baddie on top of this pedestal. And if we head up here and defeat him, that's gonna be our final orb and we're all done here. Keep in mind, after you get your last orb, you don't need to mess with any other enemies or anything else because you're instantly transported out. Tri's power is gonna go from five and two thirds to five and seven eighths. And we get these two mic crystals, nice. From here, we actually have this small part of the map and this small part of the map to uncover. On this lower part, there's no like, real big things for us to collect, so we might as well just go ahead and, you know, knock it off of the list anyways. It's my new traversal combination of put down a plat boom and use Crow to get across big things and use him like a power glider. In this lower area, the only thing to note is going to be right here in the middle of all these trees is a treasure chest that has a purple rupee. And making our way all the way to the right to this tiniest little bit of landmass, which is going to be right here on the map is going to be a suspicious piece of grass with a mighty crystal. That is now all of the southern forest unlocked, and now we're going to be making our way to southern village and talking to the old guy in front of this house right here. Hello there, traveler. Mind if I bend your ear? My wife has been sick, and he wants to see a plant that can fly. So go ahead and the pea hat that you got forever ago. You may have already done this quest, but I'm doing it now for completion's sake. Here you go. Here's a pea hat. He's going to be very surprised to find out that it's not actually a plant, but it's actually a monster. And he's going to be like, oh, no, I can't let my wife know that it was a monster. I had no idea what I was dealing with. Anyways, it's a shame because this would have cheered her up. But it turns out that his wife was listening all along and she's like, oh, well, it's the thought that it's the thought that counts. Thank you so much. I still love you after all these years of being together. And they say they're going to do some traveling, and I don't think they ever do, but here's the mic crystal! Yay! And finding the flying plant is complete. Great news, there's only one last side quest right here with this kid who actually wants to see a snowball, uh, but that's a later thing. So we're going to be returning to him later on, but I'm going to speak to him now so we can actually get the quest. What is snow, really? And great news, that is all of Southern complete. There is nothing else for you to collect other than talking to that kid once again. With our eyes set on Gerudo, it turns out I was missing this fast travel point in Gerudo Desert. You might be as well if you've been following along one to one. 
Our first thing that we have to do is make our way over to this rift, which is on top of this cave. So let's go ahead and do that. And once again, for these small rifts, I'm just gonna sort of summarize the places that you need to go of interest, not so much how to get to them because you've done this plenty of times already. There's gonna be four in total in this area. If we rescue them all, we could fix the rift. Hi, Future Austin here. My voice is a little hoarse from recording yesterday, so I'm probably only gonna have one walkthrough today because I want to rest my voice. I don't know why I went to the cave last, so you should just go in here and do this cave first. Just know that it's going to be out of order and you're going to be one ahead of whatever I am in these, you know, small rifts. To the entrance is going to be the cave where I'm going to be ending off. Against this enemy right here. Oh, I guess I could have, you know, done him first. What happens if you take an enemy holding an orb and you put, oh, you can't push him over. What if I put him in the hole? The hole that the flying tile came out of. Oh, that defeats him. And you get the orb. Well, that's neat. Going and making my way to the right of the cave. Over at the top right of the map over here, underneath this, underneath this pile of sand is actually going to be the sphere that we need. Bloop. Making our way over to the left-hand side of the entire place is going to be the next sphere that we need, located right here on the map. Bloop. Heading all the way to the left, we're going to be seeing some enemies and one of them has that real suspicious glow to him. Anyways, defeat him and reveal this orb. And now we go from level 5 and 7 eighths to level 6. And we get another triangle. Nice. Well, 6 then 1 16th. And two might crystals. Nice. There is a piece of heart we have to get right here. And then also there's going to be an enemy we have to defeat here. And then we also have to come back here later. But first there's an enemy that we have to defeat. And if you head to this warp point right here, just south of this warp point, when you come in, there's the one with all the tornadoes. If you just walk down a little bit, you're going to be seeing this little pillar of smoke. This is the enemy that we have to go ahead and defeat. Before you engage with the enemy, highly recommend that you go ahead and you put on your quick sandproof sandals. Because this is... Kind of a mini boss. You're going to be seeing some pillaring under the ground. And then this guy's going to come on out. And once he goes back inside of the ground, you're going to be seeing his tail and it's going to be real curly. Go ahead, grab his tail and then start whacking on him in sword fighter mode. He may push you away a little bit, but this is the reason that we upgraded our sword is the very first thing, because after one round of this, we're done. The quicksand goes away, as does the sandstorm. Nice. Next, we're going to be making our way to this red location right here. This area is also filled with a bunch of quicksand. And if you have the plat boom, you can sort of just bypass the whole enemy challenge and get the piece of heart. Next, we're going to be making our way to the blue marker over here from the fast travel point. And as you approach the area, there's going to be another sandstorm. You're going to see another pile of sand coming out. And just like before, he's going to come out of the ground. And then he's going to come on over here. And all we're going to do is wait for him to be halfway in the ground, grab his tail, drag him out, enter sword fighter form, and that's a GG. This one's going to drop for us a purple rupee, two monster stones, as well as uh, I'm pretty sure that was 45 additional rupee. Next, we're going to be making our way into Gerudo Town. At the Gerudo Palace, instead of going in the main door, we're going to be going to the left. And if you defeated those two big snakes in the ground, which those they're called uh, Lenmolas, then this one is going to be having a quest for you. These two soldiers are going to be like, hey, do you know about these centipede Lenmolas? They're a giant pain and there's a super big one and we're going to go defeat it because we're the best warriors out of all the Gerudo warriors. No, I'm going to defeat it. No, I'm going to defeat it. And that's the summary of everything that they said. And that's the quest Wild Sandstorms. Fun fact, this was my very last quest in my main playthrough. The second Lamola that we defeated, which is now this red marker, is where we're going to be making our way to. As you make your way over, it's going to be just like it was before, except this guy is going to be bigger and maybe stronger. I don't know. No, I haven't had one actually hit me. Oh, definitely bigger. And he's purpler. Oh, his rock hit me. Okay, just avoid the rocks that he's going to be kicking out, drag him out of the ground, enter sword fighter form, and do work. Oh, this one's actually going to survive more than one round. Isn't that neat? Okay, I don't know where he's tunneling up from. It's over here. I should have probably gotten rid of the other enemies first, but I didn't want to. Because I like a challenge. 
Ah, damn it. Yep, that's my own fault for not getting rid of the other enemies first. I think that's the reason I had the Dark Nut before, to just sort of distract the other ones. Great. Grab him, avoid the rocks, drag him out of the ground, sword fighter form, and wail on him. And after two rounds of hitting him with your sword, he's going to be defeated. And he's going to drop a piece of heart for you. And much less rupees than the last one. Now we're going to go ahead and make our way back to the two Gerudo guards in the Gerudo Palace left door. And the left guard is going to be tired from all the sparring and the right one is going to admit that she's also tired and they're going to be boasting about the Lamola and how they're going to defeat it one day. Then they're going to be surprised that you actually defeated the Lamola already. And then they're going to be running out of the room and be like, oh wow, I have to go check. The sandstorm is gone. She definitely defeated it. And then Facetta's is going to walk in and be like, hey, you two, instead of boasting about how you were going to defeat it, you should have been like Zelda and actually go defeat it. I'm really ashamed of you two. Zelda, thank you so much. You're the best. And she's going to be giving you the gold sash. This useful waistcloth woven with gold thread will protect you from being wind blown. And this is the accessory that makes you immune to wind. Yay. Wild sandstorms complete. Hi, it is Future Austin, who doesn't have much of a voice right now. And there's two side quests here in Gerudo that I missed yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and take care of those now. If we speak to this person over here, I have a favor to ask. It's something I can't really ask anyone to help me with. And she asks you to come step inside. I feel like I'm being a proposition here for her and her roommate. And she's going to be super freaked out about beetle mounds. And she's going to want you to go ahead into the desert and take care of the beetles and the beetle mounds. And this is Beetle Ballyhoo. And if you've been following along, you already went to this cave and got the chest above it. We're going to go ahead and make our way in there. Even if you just recently cleared out these enemies, it still won't count because once this quest is initiated, there's actually going to be two more mounds that are spawned into existence. Uh, Crawlchilla is really fantastic at at clearing out pretty much all of these guys like he just walks straight forward and like a train with a cow catcher just knocks them all out uh enter sword fighter you could take care of the mounds nice and easy you may also notice that the game has like a little mini lag there for a second that goes to show you that the quest is actually updated and now we just head back to town speaking with her again she's going to be thanking you so much by giving you a prize ribbon this is the heart beret it makes hearts appear more often if you are not playing in hero mode She's going to be commended on her job of clearing out all of the beetles and she's going to be like, oh, well, thank you so much. And then she's going to feel super guilty for taking the credit for something that you did. And then she says, oh, what am I going to do? And then out of nowhere, she decides that she's actually going to man up to the job that she signed up for. And that's going to be this quest complete, Beetle Ballyhoo. Just to the right of Gerudo Palace, we're going to be seeing the chief's daughter out here that says security looks good and Donna is going to have a challenge for you. She wants you to break into the treasury, which is the room on the left hand side that's been totally sectioned off and you haven't been able to en enter it before now. So go ahead, accept the quest and that starts Donna's challenge. If you make your way over to the left, you're now going to see that the guard who was on top of the ceiling is now gone. Using a whole mill, we can go ahead and dig our way in, which is going to be putting us right in front of this treasure chest down here, which is not our final destination, but it's some cactus, which is cool, I guess. Now, people were talking about once you're inside of a vase, uh, enemies won't see you. I wonder if it works for portions of a quest like this. Oh, we can't go upstairs in a vase. That makes sense. Are you suspicious of vase? You're suspicious of it, and then you think nothing of it. I mean, this isn't very hard in the first place. I probably didn't even need to do the vase stuff. You're suspicious, but you're going to not investigate. Great security, guys. Great security. Uh, that's also a great way to, for you to avoid the re-deads being mad at you and doing their whole screamy thing. And we're going to get silk pajamas. Silk pajamas make it so that when you're sleeping in a bed, you're actually going to be recovering hearts faster, which is nice. If you're not doing the whole, you know, get up and get down sort of thing. Donna's going to feel so confident that she had everything figured out. And then she's like, hey, you know what? It's fine. Keep those pajamas. I have a pair myself. Now we're now we're sled sisters. It's all good. And this is going to be Donna's challenge complete. There's only one last thing for us to collect in all of the Gerudo Desert. And that's going to be at the Oasis. And that's going to be Mango Rush. 
speaking with the person here, they're gonna be like, hey, do you wanna play some Mango Rush? Yes. And there's like, I've been waiting for you. It's my grandest work yet. I'm sure you're gonna be fine. It's called the Ultimate Seeds. Now this course is similar to the last ones, except now it's not, instead of not only spiked thorns, now there's also bomb flowers on the ground. So you need to get 60 mangoes to clear it. Oh, because we have the froggy charm, we actually don't have to set up the trampolines anymore. Am I not gonna make it? Nope, not gonna make it. Now for this first round, you're not really expected to actually clear all of the mangoes. All you need is 60 of them. I missed five of them and that's perfectly fine because after, she's gonna be like, exquisite, I didn't expect you to do it that well. Well, anyways, here's an outfit and this is the dancing outfit. And this is one of the few outfits in the game that's actually going to be giving you an additional trait. And the trait is that your spin attack is actually going to have a wider radius now. So go ahead and equip the dancing outfit and speak with her again. So it's the exact same course as before, except now with your spin radius being dramatically larger, you don't need to get nearly as close to the mangoes as you did before. Also, you're not going to be triggering any of the hazards with your hair. You're only going to be triggering them by walking into them. So you can reach mangoes on the other side of hazards that you couldn't before. After those ones at the top, be sure to get the ones on the left and then make your way to the top. If you go for the ones on the right, you're not going to be making it in time. Well, may maybe hair can set off the bomb. I mean, I totally did that on purpose because I wanted to show you that even if you go ahead and set off a bomb, you're absolutely fine. You have plenty of time to spare. And for getting 70 out of 70, you're going to get yourself a piece of heart. And of course, you know, 12 mangoes. And with that, that is now every single collectible in all of Gerudo done. We never have to come back to the desert again, except for obviously Mango Rush to make smoothies for money in case you need that in the future. But if you did it before, you probably don't need to do it again. Next, we're gonna be making our way to Jabu Waters. And the very first thing that we wanna do as soon as we come to this area is realize that there's a piece of heart right next to Jabu Jabu's palace right here. So just go ahead and get yourself that piece of heart. That's gonna be our 11th heart. The absolute worst number in any Zelda game ever because you only have one heart in the next row. And now I'm gonna be making my way up to right over there. On our way up to that red marker, if we come right over here, there's gonna be one unsuspecting chest in this monster camp. Go ahead, interact with the chest. And this is gonna be three mite crystals. Despite the monster camp not actually having the mite crystals as the monster camp reward. I'm gonna go ahead and defeat all these guys to see if the treasure is actually worth it for you. Oh, it's a golden egg, definitely worth it. And now we're actually finally gonna be making our way to this rift. As with all of them suspiciously, we have to approach from the south. Inside of here are going to be three of the orbs that we have to go and collect for Tri's friends. This is the stilled Eastern Zora Rift. From the entrance, if you go ahead and make your way left to this tiny island, you're gonna be able to find yourself an orb right in the middle of the tree. And on the right hand side, right over here, is where you're gonna be finding a cave. This cave is gonna be having two orbs for us and we're gonna be leaving from here. Since there's no map of this 2D subsection from the middle area, head to the left. And at the very top of the area above the jellyfish is gonna be the orb. Returning back to the middle and now I'm gonna be heading to the right. And over here, you're gonna be finding a few enemies inside of the water. I'm gonna go ahead, enter sword fighter form and defeat fish real quick. And once fish is defeated, he's gonna be dropping the orb. And we're all done here. Tri's power is gonna grow from sixth and 1 16th to six and a quarter. And you're gonna be getting two mite crystals. We're all done here. Our next order of business is to make our way to the River Zora Village. And if you make your way up to these two huts over here, you're gonna be seeing the child from before and he's gonna say, Ugh, my mom's being weird. She's staring at the pool in our house, talking to herself, something about monsters. Ah, she's gonna feed me to the monsters. Wait, no, this isn't it. This young child is gonna be super scared of her mom saying uh, she's gonna feed me to the monsters and you're gonna be getting the quest, The Zora Child's Fate. So head inside of the left house over here. And if we speak with her, maybe you'll help me with a personal matter. First, I need a monster that looks like a sinister fish. Put it in the water. How about the tangler? Perfect. Great. Next, she's going to ask for a monster that goes boom when anything is near it. So go ahead and put in the bomb fish. And lastly, she's going to need a shocking jellyfish. So go ahead and put in the beery. The child's gonna be like, oh, wait, you're not gonna feed me the monsters? And the mom is like, no, I was studying the fish in order to make a, a charm that's been passed down through the Zora people that's gonna teach you how to swim. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try. Look, he's swimming. Convenient that uh, the animation of him being in the water to swimming happened off screen, but you know, that's cool too. And as a reward, you're gonna be getting the Zora scale. 
It makes it so that you can hold your breath underwater longer, and it is a fantastic accessory to have for anything that's underwater, which, ironically, there's not too much of going forward, but it's nice to have anyways. Our next point of interest is gonna be right where I am on the map. This little platform is gonna be a monster camp, which I'm gonna be sending out a whole bunch of boomerang bokoblins, which they could defeat the spear bokoblin. I'm gonna keep calling them bokoblins, and I'm sorry about that, and I try so hard to not say bokoblin, but, Listen, man, I, I, I try. Oh, I never got this guy before. Really? Wait, are you Spear Moblin level two? Yeah, Spear Moblin level two. Inside of this chest is three Mite Crystals. Very nice. Up next, we're gonna be making our way to the Sea Zora Village. As soon as you show up, there's gonna be someone on the right with a side quest on them and says, it must be me. And Rogma is gonna say, hey, I think there's something up with the Chief. She's been avoiding me recently. And can you do me a favor and talk to Chief Drad about this? Well, sure, no problem. That's gonna start the side quest, Secret Chief Talks, and we're gonna be heading back to the River Zora Village and talking to the Chief. It turns out that the Chief isn't here. I've been the boss's new assistant for a few weeks. We were together all the time, but now this, I can't take it. Avoiding me whispering about Kushara, seriously, what's this about? The assistant's gonna say, I don't know where he is. Ask the other River Zora, he's been talking to some of them. The next Zora to speak to is actually gonna be the dad who was stuck in the rift right next to the kid who's now swimming. It says, speak to Tellum, and Tellum went fishing east of the village. So we're gonna be heading into the pathway behind the house all the way to the right. We're gonna be going past this person who says, look up at the sky. And if you keep going to the right, you're going to be seeing this person hiding in a corner. Tell him is going to say it's a wild guess, but maybe he's gone to the cave at Zora Cove. Someone do me a favor. Don't follow this quest exactly and just head to this location. You know, this is where uh, we were during the main part of the quest. And don't speak to the additional Zora. Let me know if you could just go to that location and they're there. From a game design angle, I feel like they would be but it would be nice to know 100% confirmation. Heading to the cave out in the middle of the sea. Oh, it turns out that people are here and so are the chiefs. These two are gonna be caught off guard like they're having an affair or something. These two assistants are gonna express that they said that, hey, we're, you guys are acting super weird and you shouldn't be acting weird. We don't know what we're doing wrong. And these two are like, hey, you know, we appreciate you guys so much and we want to find a way to thank you properly from the events that happened with Lord Jabu Jabu, and they're gonna be like, oh no, it's totally fine. We're just happy that we're all getting along now. And that's that's all that dialogue summarized. And as a reward, you're gonna be getting the gold brooch, which is gonna make it so that you're more likely to get rupees every time that you break objects and defeat monsters. And that secret chief's talks complete. Also, we're gonna be getting uh, these two things in the water over there and over there, and that's directly related to the sea Zora village. Now that that mission is complete, I'm gonna be heading into the sea and we're gonna be heading over to that blue marker. And as you make your way on over there is gonna be a bombable bit of rock in the ocean. So let's go ahead, take a bomb fish and activate him on top of the rock and also defeat that guy. And that's gonna be getting us a piece of heart. Super nice. From here, we're gonna swim just a tiny bit west and you're gonna be seeing a chest underneath the water. Go ahead and open that up. Bomb fish, bomb the fish. And inside of here is gonna be kelp inside of a chest in the ocean. Ironic, right? And now we're gonna be making our way inside of Zora Cove and speaking with this first Zora over here, who says the monsters around the sea, the people of the seaside village, it's really difficult, but finding the right thing to put my treasure in is just so hard. Zelda, can you help me out with that? And you say, sure, no problem. That's gonna be the side quest, Precious Treasure. And the person is gonna be waiting outside of Zora's Cove. So go ahead, swim on out. And that treasure chest that we just opened up, notice how it didn't despawn? It's the only one in the game. It actually has unique properties that causes it to not despawn. Go ahead and bring it over back towards Zora Cove. The person is waiting over on the left-hand side. Go ahead, take the treasure chest and put it in front of them. This is perfect and it's beautiful too. Thanks so much. And now I'm gonna clean all my treasures before I put them in there. And you're gonna be getting monster stones as a reward. And that's gonna be precious treasure complete. Now we're gonna be making our way to our red marker, which is literally out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's directly south of the water flow. So yeah, just head there. By the way, great time to put the Zora flipper and the Zora scale on, that way you can swim faster. And as you make your way on over, there's going to be another bombable bit of rock underneath the water. Go ahead and activate bomb fish. And down here is going to be a mite crystal. Nice. Hi, it's Future Austin again, and it turns out that there's one more quest here in the Zora Cove area that depending on your pathing, you may or may not have ran into it already. 
just left of this mite crystal. I think we need to make our way about here, uh, just randomly in the middle of the water. And as you approach that area, you're gonna be seeing this river Zora on top of a boat, and he's surrounded by monsters. Uh, and fun thing, this actually answered a question I have, which was like, okay, so what happens if River Zora go into the ocean? I'm gonna go ahead, send out a chomp fin, and send out my own jellyfish. The jellyfish didn't do a good job, and neither did the chomp fin. We are going to go on top of the boat, and now we're invincible, because, you know, they're dumb water animals. And you could either do the sea urchin drop that I covered before. What about bombfish? How good of a job are you gonna do? Oh, yeah, bombfish works great. Well, that worked. Nice. Now let's just hop on top of his boat and go speak to him. So this River Zora is going to be here fishing, and he doesn't like being in the water because I think he says that uh, the seawater makes his skin feel itchy. And that really makes sense because he's a freshwater animal as opposed to the rest of them that are seawater, and that's what happens when they're in the wrong type of water. And as a reward, you're going to be getting River Horses. And that's Big Shot complete. Next, we're going to be making our way to Seaside Village. Here at Seaside Village, there's gonna be a bombable rock. Why don't we go ahead and bomb the bombable rock? Back here is gonna be a treasure chest with some rupees, nice. And over here is gonna be a cat. This cat is gonna be giving us a side quest, but unless you made your way to Kakariko Village and got the outfit for it, or unless you have the Ganondorf or one of the baddie amiibos or the champions amiibos, you don't have the cat outfit yet, so I'm just gonna put down a marker and we're gonna come back here later. The very last collectible in this area requires us to make our way to this guy who's gonna be talking about this ship. And he's gonna say, have you seen that ship out in the Southwest? That was my ship. And then it fell into disrepair and I've been making repairs ever since, but now there's a giant monster in it. Can you defeat the monster? And you'd be like, yeah, sure, no problem, old man. And that's the Zappy Shipwreck. Is there a closer fast travel point? There's not a closer fast travel point, okay. But you know what is closer? Uh, putting out a crow and then using crow to go. Yeah, let's go crow. I put out a video yesterday talking about how to do this. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. And something that was inaccessible before was this door. Go ahead and pry it off. And let's head on inside. This is the wrecked shipwreck, and opposed to the uh, Eastern Temple, this is so much faster. Uh, there's only going to be a few baddies in here to actually go ahead and deal with. This box over here on the top right is going to lead to the exit of this room. This next room has nothing in it except for some boxes and jars. It's followed by a room with some tech tykes, some sea urchins, some keys. Just go ahead and make your way all the way to the left, past where the Octoroks are. In this room, we have a chest at the top left, containing potatoes every seaman's best friend. And then you're gonna notice that there's a, a little bit of a hole into the water. Go ahead and dive down. Here we have ourselves another 2D section that we have to make our way down and oh, it gets dark. Down here at the bottom right is gonna be another chest with a purple ruby. Continue making your way all the way to the left-hand side along the bottom. And as you do, you're gonna be able to rise up. There's gonna be some jellyfish over here. Don't stay up to the left. Instead, you're gonna make your way just a little bit past the sea urchins and rise to the surface. Doing that is going to put you in a room with a bunch of beds and another chest. Go ahead and rearrange all these beds as intended to make your way over, or spider. Thank you, spider. From here on the left-hand side, we're going to put down some water blocks. We're going to swim to the right-hand side. We're going to target this green statue back here and grab it. We're then going to use these water blocks to swim on up. Oh, I should have put these water blocks just a little bit to the right. That's fine. Grab the statue, swim on up, and make your way over to the left. Going through the door, we're going to be finding a pole and some hydrazoles and some sharks and some electric boys. And the game is like, hey, we really want you to defeat all these enemies. But you don't have to. Come on over here, get the red rupee, and just make your way up to the top. This last room has a red rupee just chilling over on the side. And this carpet is going to be the boss room. This room has a whole bunch of jellyfish that are connected to a bigger electric jellyfish. And honestly, it really reminds me of the enemy that was inside of Lord Jabu Jabu's belly in Ocarina of Time, and I don't know if that's the point. Anyways, um, Bokoblins, can you just win? Do your boomerangs, are, are, are your boomerangs OP? No, because you go for the boss. 
Shark, are you gonna do a great job? Not really, you kinda get zapped a lot. What about five crows? Are five crows better? Oh, that's right. When uh, all of the jellyfish come in close, they aren't electrocuted, and you can just come on over in sword fighter form and take them down real quick. Once all the outside jellyfish are disabled, you can come on into the middle and attack the main jellyfish. And then we're gonna be entering phase two, which is the same thing, but slightly different, because now the jellyfish is gonna move around. What about just long casting sea urchins in the way of the jellyfish? Or just, you know, wait for all of the jellyfish to be chilling here at the middle and then take them out one by one nice and easy. I don't know, I'm being real impatient about this one. All I remember is that it was a pretty forgettable battle. Definitely avoid all the electric. Great, after all the little jellyfish are defeated, go ahead and attack the big jellyfish. And after like two phases of hitting it, it's dead. Now you know why I, I rushed through this segment so much, because it's sort of ridiculously simple and easy. Nice amount of rupees and piece of heart. And let's go ahead and make our way back to the seaside village. Let's speak with the old man. He said he saw a whole bunch of crazy flashy stuff. What, there was a big old zappy monster? Wow, you did it. Good job, kid. Thanks for saving my boat. And as a reward, here's a fairy bottle. Actually, a pretty great reward. And that's going to be the Zappy Shipwreck complete. Now we have pretty much every single quest in order. It doesn't actually tell you the order. I just know what the order is from the game ID, except for what is snow really? Because we need a snowball, a treat for my person, which is the cat quest, because we haven't made our way to Kakariko Village yet, unless you have and you already did that. Then the rental horse quest at the ranch. Other than that, we have everything in order, which is pretty fantastic. Next episode, I plan on clearing out all of East Hyrule Field, Hyrule Castle, regular Hyrule Field, and Kakariko Village. So we're going to be able to uncover a lot more of the map. The Dompe stuff, I might just make that its own separate video and save the main quests for last. Well, great. Guys, if you found this video helpful, and I know you did, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If the next episode is out, it's on screen. Thank you for being here. Until next time. Austin John out.